This is Get Real with Bob and Stacy, the show that helps you learn about the mortgage and real estate markets, get the inside scoop from their expert list of guests, and have some fun along the way. Now, here's Bob Callagher and Stacy Alcorn. Welcome back, and thanks for joining us here on Get Real. You're listening to our Leaders and Legends segment, and our first guest for the show today is Alan Klein, jollytologist, best-selling author, and award-winning speaker. Welcome to the show, Alan. It is fabulous to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So this is kind of unique because you are the world's one and only jollytologist. Um, Alan, through his books and presentations, shows people worldwide how to use humor to deal with everything from traffic jams to tragedies. He's an award-winning professional speaker. He's received all kinds of accolades, Lifetime Achievement Award from the Association for Applied Therapeutic Humor, Certified Speaking Professional, designation from National Speakers Association, and a Toastmasters Communication and Leadership Award. He has written more than 25 books, which have sold over 600,000 copies. Some of his books include The Healing Power of Humor, Learning to Laugh When You Feel Like Crying, and his latest book, which we're going to talk about today, You Can't Ruin My Day. So... The theme of the book, I take it, is how to take back your power and not let anyone or anything ruin your day or life. Where did the idea of the book come from? I was on my way to the gym. It was a Saturday morning. I was really happy. It was my intention to have a great day, and I'm getting a speeding ticket on the way to the gym. And I was listening to music from Billy Elliot. I had just seen the show, and I'm singing. I'm happy I get to the gym, and I'm telling people, I just got a speeding ticket. And then going, how can you be singing and happy you just got a ticket? <laughs> and out of my mouth came, I'm not going to let that policeman or that um, ticket ruin my day. And I realized how often we let other people or other things ruin our day, and we have the power to not let that happen. So I started to put the book uh, together, and I came up with 52 ways that either I or other people I was researching used to have a great day every day and, and not let anything or anyone ruin it. Why do you think people allow themselves or allow other people to ruin their day? Well, part of it's human nature, you know, but I don't. Th I think the main reason is we don't realize that we have the power to do that, that and one of the main themes of the book is that there's no inherent meaning to anything. We put the meaning on everything mm -hmm. through our eyes. You know, somebody could be in a traffic jam and going, oh, I'm going to miss that meeting and this is awful. And someone else can go, I'm going to miss that meeting and this is great. Now I have a great excuse. <laughs> I didn't want to go to that yes. meeting anyhow. Good point. <laughs> That's awesome. What does it mean to set your intention? Oh, wow. I just did a TEDx talk on that. It's not out on YouTube yet. But um, to, to wake up in the morning, what kind of day are you going to be having? My intention before I did the show with you right now mm -hmm. was to have a great show, mm -hmm. to have a great interview. So because I think the world, you start, you start thinking that way and the world kind of lines up um, with your thinking and people start getting on board with your thinking. So I'll give you one example. I used to live in New York City. I wanted to march in the Macy Day Parade when I was here in San Francisco looking at it one Thanksgiving. I didn't know how to do it, but my intention was I'm going to march in the Macy Day Parade. So I asked everyone I knew, because I believe we're six degrees of separation from people that could help us get what we want, and nobody knew how, to, how I can get in the parade. Mm -hmm. So I asked a couple of my other friends on Facebook, my 25 hundred friends mm -hmm. and one woman said i don't know who to ask but i'll find out for you i live in new york city and she did and i got in the parade and it was one of the most joyous uh, events in my life because i'm shaking hands with everyone along the parade route a lot of people and wishing them happy thanksgiving and the kids faces and the older people's faces um just were glowing everyone was happy that day so it was my intention to do it, and I made it happen. That is so cool. That's an awesome story. So what do you mean by the wake-up call, stop struggling? Well, again, it's what is your intention. Um, and often 
what I find in my life, when I'm struggling with something, when something's not happening or coming, I think maybe it's not the right time. Or maybe I'm doing it wrong. Or I got to stop. I got to. I got to let that go. And and again, let the world support me. So when I so about eight of my books were published by Random House, and they closed that division, and mm-hmm. so the books were out of print. So I got the um, rights back, and for a year, over a year and a half, I struggled. I struggled every day contacting publishers, contacting other authors. Who was their publisher? trying to get those books republished, and it didn't happen. And I thought, Alan, stop struggling. And so I put a little note, a card above my computer that said, the perfect publisher will find me. Hmm. And I just let that happen. And so several months later, I go to a meeting, I sit down, and the man beside me is turned around talking to two women, and they're telling him, that they have a uh, very successful publishing company, but they're starting a new division, and they are looking for books that are uplifting, motivational, inspirational. And I turned around and I said, I have seven or eight of those, but I have the rights back. They're all ready to go. And they gave me their card to send them the books. And I looked at the card, and this was the first miracle, the first Stop Struggling, the um, card, their office was five blocks away from where I lived. Hmm. So I brought the wow. books to them, and they since published several. But then they got too uh, big for this small office, so they moved, had a big party. I walk in, and this woman comes up to me, and she says, I don't, uh, you don't know me, but I know you, and I own this company. I'm glad you're one of our authors. I live in London, so I'm not here a lot. That's why you haven't seen me but I've known you for about 10 years. And I look at her and go, I don't know you. Mm. And she said, and this is the second miracle why the perfect publisher found me. She said, I used to live across the street from you, and I'd see you walk your dog every single day for 10 years. Holy cow. The perfect publisher found me, and now they have published, I think next year's book is the eighth or ninth book they're publishing. Wow. That's an awesome story. You also say that people need to practice staying in neutral. What does that mean? Well, you know when you put your car, Stacy, in neutral and it doesn't go forward, it Mm -hmm. doesn't go backwards, it doesn't go sideways. Mm -hmm. It's just there. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when we get caught up in things, we need to realize we can put things in neutral. Mm -hmm. Don't get in an argument. You know, if you're flying and your flight is delayed or canceled, don't get in an argument with the person behind the counter. They're doing their job. Maybe the weather's not good. Maybe the engine doesn't work. Do you really want to get on the plane in that circumstance? Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Just put it in neutral and and just, um, you know, kind of go with the flow thing mm-hmm. because uh, that's, again, the struggle. When we resist stuff, that causes us stress. That causes us, um, could even cause illness if you have that much stress, but... Um, being being um, confrontive is not always the best choice. Yes. So I'm going to ask your opinion on something since, I mean, what are the chances I'll ever get a jolly tologist on the phone again? Because there's only one. <laughs> we have his number, so pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can call. <laughs> so What's your question? All right. So the other day I was in a really negative mood. I was heading to the gym. I go to the gym in Boston, which normally Boston is a 20 minute ride, but in the mornings it's like an hour and a half. So by Uh the time I got to my trainer, I was so negative, like, and, and I understand, like, I believe that, um, if you have negative vibrations that you connect, you end up creating more negative stuff in your life. So I knew I had to snap out of the negative vibration. So I go to the gym, I'm like really negative. My my trainer's like, oh, how's your diet going? I'm like, terrible. I'm going to just eat Hostess cupcakes. I'm like, really <laughs> negative. And um, so I leave the gym, and I have a parking ticket at 8.15, and the meters don't even go on till 8 a.m. So I'm like, all right, I've attracted a parking ticket already into my day. Mm-hmm. So on, I'm like, all right, on the ride home, I need to start changing my focus 
or I'm going to get more negative stuff. So the way that I try to change my perspective is I do what's called a focus wheel, like put what I want to happen um, mm -hmm. in the middle of it and then start writing all around the wheel um, the evidence that what I want to happen is in fact happening. Mm -hmm. So that was great. So and did did it work? Oh God, yeah. By the end of the day and by the next morning, I was like a new person instead of focusing. Because uh -huh. yeah. I think in and general, see, this is ex you mm -hmm. you you should have written this book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, you have the power to do that. Right. You could you could have you could have been negative for the whole week, mm -hmm. or you could have changed that and go, yeah, I got the parking ticket. Yeah, this happened. That I am in traffic. But just, you know, again, put it in neutral. So what do you... Substitute it with something more positive. All right, because that's what I was going to ask you is, like, what do you tell people to do when they're in a really bad state? Like, how do you get them to change perspective? Okay, so one of the things that I'm famous for as the jollytologist mm -hmm. is carry clown noses around. Have them in the car. Oh, God. Have them at home for yes. arguments okay. with your spouse or your kids. Yep. And Put on a clown nose and look in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you could be mad after you look at yourself <laughs> yeah. with a clown nose on. Exactly. And imagine if you walked into your trainer wearing a clown nose. That's awesome. They yes. would have laughed. You would have laughed. <laughs> and uh, at least momentarily, any of that anger, any of that stress, any of that upset would have gone out the window. That is so mm -hmm. awesome. That's so simple. So simple. I, I believe in simple stuff. You know, most of us don't tell jokes well, so finding humor that way is difficult. But having, having I have a picture of my daughter around when she had a, a teenager, she had a pie thrown in her face, which is something she wanted since she was like eight years old. Mm -hmm. And I just look at her glowing with whipped cream all over That's her face. That's awesome. And again, it just lifts me up. It changes um, my attitude. It changes my thinking. So in your book, I know you concentrate some on the value of gratitude, like finding things to be thankful for. But what would you say to somebody that has just had really difficult life circumstances? Well, you know, I got into the humor business because my wife passed away when she was 34. Wow. Oh. And, and we knew that she had a terminal illness at 31. Yeah. And yes, it was a very sad, it was a very tearful time. But we laughed together a lot. And so I would focus on those moments. Again, where do you focus? So when something negative happens or something you don't like, you can focus on that. And it can bring you down, or you can focus on, like with my wife, the great times we have together, the fact that you know we had, she gave me a daughter, um, the laughter that we had together. I could focus on that, or I can focus on she's no longer here. Wow. And and in some ways, you know, she gave me, even though I didn't want her to pass away, but she gave me the career of uh, therapeutic humor that came out of her death because she had a, such a great sense of humor and Norman Cousins is talking about healing himself with it that I got into that field. It was because of her. So I wow. focus on that yeah. rather than on that she's no longer here. And I'm grateful on some levels that my life turned out the way um, it has. So do you ever have a bad day? Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm human. But then I start thinking, wait a minute, this is what you teach. You've got, yeah, you've you got to turn this around. Yeah, you can't have that. You know, and often we learn what we, you know, uh, need to learn. We teach what we need to learn. So uh, I'm learning a lot, too. Wow, that's awesome. So I have a couple more questions for you. But before sure. we go there, what is it? best place or where is the best place for people to stay in touch with you buy your books etc oh that's a great question mm -hmm. <laughs> my website triple w allen klein.com and that's they need to spell it right a l l e n k l e i n.com allen klein.com they can just go on the Internet and look up Alan Klein, A L L E N K L E I N, um, or they can email me at humor, H U M I O R, H U M O R, at alanklein.com. So let's talk about your daughter. 
do you have any tips for kids? Because especially kids like I have a six year old and she has a kid at school that picks on her and she comes home upset. And what kind of advice do you give to little kids to deal with other people, deal with bad days? Wow, that's you didn't know this, but my next book is called Secrets Kids Know and mm. Adults Ought to Learn. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, but again, you can teach her what we were just talking about, mm -hmm. that when that other kid is, um, I wouldn't say bullying, yeah. but upsetting her, mm -hmm. um, she has the power to not let that child do it like jujitsu she can just let it pass her rather than taking the punch yes. just step aside and, and let it pass her and focus on all the great stuff at school or are the kids that she really likes mm -hmm. or her own what you know her own talents her own wonderfulness right again focus on that and i think kids you know the other thing about kids, and, and one of the points in that book, is that we can learn so much from them because often, I, I mean, she probably doesn't carry that upset around for weeks, right? Right. Oh, God, she, it's gone like half a day later. There you go. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think adults can learn, you know, from kids how to do that. Just, right. Yeah, they're upset, and then they... Oh, they say, I never want to play with her again. And then two minutes later, yeah, you they're know, playing. they're playing with yeah. that person. <laughs> hmm, that's awesome. Do, so in your, let's say with your daughter, like, does she ever say, Dad, just be serious for a minute? Like, Just be, be curious? Serious. Because serious. it serious. seems like oh, you're I'm like, sorry. really, you're funny and happy. And like, yeah, do you um, have seriousness Not in when you? she was younger we mm -hmm. used to laugh a lot together we would walk down the street and go to a parking meter and make believe it was a microphone and yes. sing to oh, it. oh that's <laughs> awesome but uh when she was a teenager she would yes dad mm -hmm. dad stop dad yes. you're being silly dad mm -hmm. you know you're embarrassing me mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. that's funny um and that she that phase passed and now um she's a an adult, and we laugh a lot together. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It's been awesome talking to you. And uh, Alan's books, The Healing Power of Humor, Learning to Laugh When You Feel Like Crying, and the book we covered today, You Can't Ruin My Day. Thank you for your time today. Great. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this.